Now, when I say lasers, I know exactly what you're Are thinking. Are those sharks laser beams attached to their head? Cool. Well, we're not making sharks. We are playing with lasers today. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, Chris here. Welcome back. We are taking a look at something different today. You know, of all of the things I have in my shop, you know, I've got printers galore, power tools, but I have never had a good cutting machine like a CNC or a laser cutter. And so today we are taking a look at the Algo Laser Delta 22 watt laser engraver and cutter. This is a very well-made machine. It's got a touch screen. It's Wi-Fi capable. And it's a solid state laser, which really is impressive at 22 watts uh, and it cuts beautifully. And this is a fantastic machine. I'm really excited to have it in the shop. It opens up all kinds of possibilities, especially, you know, if there are things that you are building that you don't want to cut parts for, well, guess what? It can cut your parts for you. And so opening the box, the cutter is really nicely packaged. And you're also greeted with a consumables package, which is just some stuff that you can use to experiment cutting, engraving with the machine. And as it turns out, you're supposed to assemble the cutter in the box itself. I actually pulled everything out uh, and just assembled it on my table and I didn't realize it until afterwards. But when you open the box, you are greeted with all of the parts nicely packaged. The power adapter is in there. There is an air pump included, which helps with cooling of the laser, especially when you're dealing with high power. There are laser goggles, there's associated cabling and spare parts. Putting it all together, it assembled really nicely and it was really easy. So you start by taking the laser module out of there and you install the laser module onto the machine. And then from there, you just tighten everything up, make sure it's all secure. I and mean, that's primarily it. There aren't very many pieces to it to assemble the cutter. So once the laser cutter is all built, um, you do have to set the height of the laser based off of the material uh, that you are cutting. And so there's a lever for a clamp that you open up and you set the height using that little step that they've got in there as a part of the laser assembly. And so once you set that height, you clamp it back tight and then you push a button on the side of the laser and that retracts that step. Whenever you are changing material, you do need to adjust that height to make sure that you're gonna get the optimum distance for cutting or engraving. And so I wanted to mention that because as I was cutting, I was adjusting that for the different material types that I was using. Now there is not a honeycomb base included with it. I actually found one that was the perfect size for the area underneath the machine on Amazon. I do have a link to that down in the description. Do be aware of that. You need something underneath. You don't wanna be cutting straight through into your table, whatever you have it on. Uh, and so you do wanna have something underneath. It doesn't have to necessarily be that honeycomb, but some metal or something that the, the laser is not gonna penetrate. Once I had it all together, I began experimenting with the cutter. Here we go. First official cut, let's see how it goes.
When I started all of this, I actually had a project in mind for the cutter that I wanted to try out. On the Freewing F14, they have a center grate uh, cover for the, where the speed controllers and such go. Well, I wanted to create a replacement out of ABS plastic that incorporates some 3D printed NACA inlets with it. Through the process of all of this, I was actually cutting styrene plastic primarily, but I cut wood as well. I wanted to test out different materials, different thicknesses of materials. You know, balsa wood, I cut some light ply, it'll cut hard ply, um, acrylic, anything you want. Uh, just be aware of the thicknesses. You may have to do multiple passes to cut all the way through. I will mention the cutter does not come with software. So you do have to purchase software separately. It's not very expensive. It's called Lightburn. I have a link to that down in the description as well. Before you get to the software, you do have to have a file, a CAD file, DXF, DWG, something like that, a vector line file that you can import into the software. And so within that software, you import your drawing. Whatever it is you're cutting, you bring that in in the proper format into the Lightburn software. And I do recommend having multiple colors assigned. So anything you're gonna cut, assign one color, and anything you're going to engrave, assign a different color. And so in the example here, I was actually cutting some light plywood. I wanted to cut the ply and then I wanted to test out the engraving. The cut lines were assigned red and then the engraving were assigned green. And so in the software there are three knobs that you can basically tweak to set speed, power, and passes. With a piece of test material you want to sort out if you're cutting what's the power and speed combination required and in some cases you may have to do multiple passes. Light ply, piece that I designed, let's see how it goes. All right, cut all the way through. Super clean. Awesome. In the case of the light ply, uh, I was able to do it in one pass pretty easily at 90% power, about 300 millimeters per second speed, which is not too bad. And then the engraving was set at a much lower power much higher speed and that all worked out beautifully now in the case of the plastic the sheet styrene plastic i actually set it up to do three passes at about 80 percent power at a relatively moderate speed uh, but i'm sure it would have cut it in one pass without any problems uh, had i gone up to like 100 percent power and a slower speed the nice thing is that they have a pump included with it to help with cooling of the laser because if you're operating at 100 percent power all the time it is going to be kind of hard on the laser over time so um, if you can get away with using less than 100 percent power that's going to help keep the longevity of the laser going now they do include some goggles it is recommended to use those for safety reasons and also there's no cabinet or anything like this for the laser cutter. While it is Wi-Fi capable, I never actually set it up on my Wi-Fi. I wanted to manually plug in my computer to the cutter, uh, so that way I'm forced to set and, and observe, make sure everything is going okay, because you don't want to leave a laser cutter going on its own unattended. Just like charging lithium batteries, you don't want to leave them unattended. You want to keep an eye on what it's doing because there's a lot of heat and fire going there. Something could happen and if you're not there to hit the emergency stop on the cutter, then there's gonna be some potential problems. Discretion is the better part of valor, as they say, and so, you know, as rare as it's gonna be, better to be safe than sorry. And so I will be doing a whole lot more testing of this laser. I'm looking to do some production type of stuff with it as well, and so I'll be really testing it out quite a bit. What I'd like to do is utilize this for a while, uh, really, really dig into it with different materials and, and then I'll report back to you guys how it's been going. This is something I anticipate I could use a lot. It would have been really helpful on my B58 Hustler build because I'll be honest, 
I hate cutting parts when I'm building airplanes. And so now that I can just import it into CAD, cut it on the, on the laser cutter, I'm stoked. If you do any kind of building uh, at all, you can find uses for this. You can cut out all kinds of different things and there are resources out there for free files that you can download and cut and engrave with. I'm happy to have this capability in my shop now and so there's gonna be a lot more coming from it. And so that is the Algo Laser Delta 22 watt laser engraver and cutter. Such a nice machine. It's really easy to set up. It was really problem free. Uh, it's got nice documentation. It's got everything that you need to get started with the exception of that honeycomb. You do need a base of some sort if you're gonna be doing anything other than engraving. Highly recommend it if you are in the market for it. I will be circling back on this one in the future after I've used it a ton more. Laser beams, maybe we'll cut out a shark at some point. Thanks so much for watching. I've got a link for the cutter down in the description as well as the software and the honeycomb bed that I found on Amazon. Uh, and so you can check those out there. Otherwise, if you'd like to see our latest scratch build, you can see that here. And until next time, I'll see you at the field.